Marriott is the world's largest hotel chain with over 7,000 properties worldwide. But after it merged with Starwood Hotels in 2018, now it has about 30 different hotel brands. What are the differences between all these brands? Where should you aim to be redeeming your Marriott Bonvoy points at? And I'm staying right now at a JW Marriott. How is that actually different from a regular Marriott? In this video, as somebody who redeems my Marriott Bonvoy points to maximize my stays at Marriott hotels very frequently, I'm gonna walk you through, to the best of my knowledge, the differences between Marriott's 30 hotel brands. For each brand, I'll share a few of my impressions of hotels under that brand, what you can expect when you're staying with a hotel, and some of my favorite hotels around the world under that brand for you to aim for a points redemption. So we've got 30 odd hotel brands to go through and no time to waste, let's begin. We'll start on the luxury side of the spectrum with St. Regis, which is arguably the most luxurious brand within the entire Marriott Bonvoy portfolio. Now St. Regis hotels are known for their gold and glamorous decor. They're known for their over the top ostentatiousness and they're also known for providing butler service to every room. Butler service being a dedicated round the clock butler that will bring you coffee and tea at your beck and call and also help you with any needs that you have during your stay. It's definitely a very high level of luxury that they're going for and my personal favorite St. Regis experiences include the St. Regis New York, which was the original St. Regis Hotel. Understandably, there was also a fair bit of snobbery among the staff there. I also enjoyed the St. Regis Shenzhen in China with their two-story suite, as well as the St. Regis Bali, which had a killer breakfast with caviar and poached eggs and lobster as well. In the future, I'd love to stay at the St. Regis Maldives, which looks absolutely stunning. And in my opinion, if you're gonna redeem Marriott Bonvoy points for a St. Regis hotel, it's definitely gonna be a very luxurious and enjoyable experience all around. Moving on now to the Ritz-Carlton, which is also a luxury brand and one that's arguably more well-known than St. Regis. Now, in my opinion, while St. Regis has the gold and glamorous decor, the Ritz-Carlton hotels tend to look more like an old boys club on the inside. They're kind of all about the dark wooden finishes in the living room, the marble finishes in the bathroom, that type of classic luxury vibe that they're going for. Now, some people might be all about that type of vibe, Personally, while I do enjoy the marble bathrooms, they're really nice, but I do think that kind of old boys club feel is a little bit too stuffy, a little bit too much. However, I have enjoyed a few really nice Ritz-Carlton stays over the years, the best one probably being the Ritz-Carlton Kyoto in Japan, as well as the Ritz-Carlton Resorts in Langkawi and Bali, and by Canadian standards, the Ritz-Carlton Montreal is a super, super nice hotel as well. One thing you gotta know about Ritz-Carlton hotels though, they don't honor some of the Marriott Bonvoy elite benefits. You're not gonna get free breakfast at most Ritz-Carlton hotels, with the exception being the Ritz-Carlton Kyoto in Japan. And you also won't get lounge access because you do need to pay for the Ritz-Carlton club lounge access. So if all things were equal, if I had to choose between a St. Regis and a Ritz-Carlton, nine times out of 10, I'm going for the St. Regis. Next up on our luxury list, W Hotels, which really needs no introduction. W Hotels are loud, colorful, in your face, bold and boisterous, and they're kind of the place in every city to see and be seen. Or at least that's the way they market themselves. And every W Hotel usually has a weird gimmick or two to really capture your attention and make half the people who walk by the hotel say, oh, I'd love to stay there. And the other half say, oh, take me as far away as that place as possible. You can expect some outlandish decor in your room, minimal privacy between the bedroom and the bathroom, with sometimes even a bathtub in the bedroom itself, and some awesome spaces to host a party or two. And when you get out to the public areas, you can usually expect a killer outdoor pool, some crazy outlandish decor in the lobby as well, and of course, a huge W sign that makes sure you know exactly where you are. Some of my favorite W hotel stays have been in Shanghai, Dubai, and the Verbier Ski Resort in Switzerland, and I'd also love to check out the Ws in the Maldives, Bali, and Taipei as well. Now, next up on our list is my personal favorite, JW Marriott Hotels, and I'm currently staying at the Vancouver location. I love JW Marriott because it's got this approachable sense of luxury compared to, let's say, the more stuffy types of luxury at St. Regis and Ritz-Carlton, where you kind of feel like you might be judged by the clientele if you're staying there on points. I also love JW Marriott because they've got this modern mid-century design down to a T, and because they always treat me really nicely as an elite member. Whenever I go somewhere and there's a JW Marriott hotel in town, that's usually my first choice of a place to stay because I know that I can hardly go wrong with my choice. 
Now, my personal favorite JW Marriott experiences have been at the Dubai Hotel, which is the second largest hotel in the world with a killer executive lounge. I also really enjoy the JW Marriott Park Vancouver right here. They've always treated me really well. And of course, the JW Marriott Maldives, which was a very, very special trip for me last year, just before the pandemic hit, that I finally got to squeeze in my first trip to the Maldives with my favorite hotel brand. Now, next up, the Luxury Collection, which is kind of like Marriott's collection of independent luxury hotels. Hotels that would otherwise be really nice, but wouldn't fit into one of the other brands, but have also decided to work with Marriott anyway. There's quite a bit of variety across the entire luxury collection portfolio, but you can generally expect some really nicely appointed rooms and suites, some really good elite treatment as a Marriott Bonvoy elite member, and perhaps a touch more character compared to some of the other hotels that are under the more cookie cutter brands under the entire portfolio. My favorite luxury collection hotel that I've stayed at is no doubt the Al Mahad Desert Resort on the outskirts of Dubai, where you actually get an entire Bedouin suite to yourself. You've got the desert animals wandering up to your private pool. You've got two activities and three meals a day covered under your all-inclusive plan, including if you redeem points at this resort. It's one of the top tier aspirational experiences for Marriott Bonvoy members, and it's something I'd recommend that everybody try at least once. All right, now wrapping up our luxury brands is Edition Hotels, which can kind of be thought of as the modern and more millennial-oriented successor to Ritz-Carlton. The name of the game with Edition Hotels is minimalism. You can basically expect a very simple setup in your room or your suite, a simple bed, desk, TV, simple stuff in the bathroom, and that's basically it. Supposedly, the service is excellent, and that's what justifies the pretty expensive prices that Edition Hotels charge. I'm looking forward to a stay at the Bodrum Edition in Turkey one day, which I hear is one of the best Edition hotels out there. The other thing to know about Edition hotels, not only are they super expensive, but they're also kind of stingy. Just like Ritz Carlton's, they don't give free breakfast to Marriott Bonvoy Platinum Elite members and above, with the exceptions of very few Edition hotels, the Bodrum Edition in Turkey being one exception, and that's another reason why I'm looking forward to staying. Now, one more thing to note before we move on from the luxury brands, there's also technically the Ritz-Carlton Reserve and Bulgari Hotels under the Marriott portfolio. However, these two brands don't actually participate in Marriott Bonvoy, so you can't earn or redeem points, you can't earn elite nights, and you can't use your elite benefits either. Basically, there's not much point looking at these hotels unless you're gonna splash the cash. All right, so now we've covered all the luxury hotel brands, now we're gonna move down a step to kind of the upscale premium hotels that aren't quite the top tier luxury. And in this category, you've got Marriott, Sheraton, and Delta hotels. In my mind, there's not too much to set them apart, so I'm gonna address all three at once. All three brands are full service hotels that you can find in pretty much every major market in the world. And sometimes they're accused of being a little bit cookie cutter because the experience is largely the same from one place to another. The rooms and suites are typically pretty standard in terms of design, there's not too much special that's going on, and the elite treatment is usually pretty good with an executive lounge for elite members to visit for breakfast and evening hors d'oeuvres. The other good thing I would say about Marriott, Sheraton, and Delta hotels is that they tend to be offered in locations where you wouldn't necessarily expect a higher-end luxury hotel. For example, when I visited Accra in Ghana as well as Novosibirsk in Siberia, you wouldn't expect a St. Regis or a W in these places, but there's usually going to be a Marriott Accra, a Marriott Novosibirsk. It's kind of a reliable brand that you can find in all places around the world, and usually in some of these more off-the-beaten-path locations, they tend to be priced very cheaply compared to the local cash rates as well. In terms of my favorites, I might just go with the Marriott Novosibirsk in terms of having a nice junior suite to rest our heads after a grueling journey on the Trans-Siberian Railway. For the Sheraton, I would pick the Sheraton Oman for their crazy studio suite that we received. And for Delta Hotels, well, it's Canadian brand and the Delta Toronto has killer views of the CN Tower, so I'll go with that. Now the parallel brands to Marriott, Sheraton, and Delta that are also in that premium upscale category but supposedly have a bit more character about them are Westin, La Meridian, and Renaissance Hotels. Now I really couldn't tell you too many specific differences between all of these brands because after staying at all of them, they kind of start blending together a little bit. But for Westin, La Meridian, and Renaissance, they tend to have a little bit more emphasis on the lifestyle element of staying at a hotel. So for example, Westin hotels around the world will sometimes provide free sneakers for their guests, 
probably before the COVID era, just in case the guest hasn't brought their own sneakers so they can go down to the gym for a workout. Or as an alternative, I've found that Renaissance hotels typically have some more quirky interior decor, just to add a little bit of inspiration to your stay. I haven't had the best experiences with La Meridian hotels. I found that their beds can sometimes be a bit uncomfortable, so I'd probably say that they're my least favorite in this entire category. But in terms of my favorites, the Western Perth is an awesome hotel for any trip to Western Australia. It's got a killer breakfast, a really nice club lounge, and they're pretty generous with their suite upgrades to some pretty sick suites. My favorite Renaissance hotel in the world is probably the St. Pancras Renaissance Hotel in London. It's housed in the same building as the St. Pancras train station and it looks like you're in a Harry Potter movie the whole time. And for La Meridian, like I said, they haven't been my favorite, but if I had to pick one that I've stayed at so far, the La Meridian Cairo Airport was a solid choice for an overnight stay in Cairo. It's directly linked to the Cairo Airport, so you don't have to deal with all the taxi drivers. You just go straight to the La Meridian, hang out in the club lounge, get your night of sleep, and then go see the pyramids on an overnight layover. Finally, one last brand in this full service category that I haven't stayed at myself is called Gaylord Hotels. And I think they've only got a few locations across the United States. I really don't know too much about Gaylord Hotels. They seem pretty good looking at the pictures and one day I'll stay at them and I'll let you know how I find them. Okay, after all these cookie cutter brands, let's move on to another set of collection hotels, similar to the luxury collection that we talked about earlier, but again, a step below that, more like the upscale full service level. Here we've got the Autograph Collection, Design Hotels, and the Tribute Portfolio. And honestly, even though I haven't stayed with Design Hotels or the Tribute Portfolio before, they all kind of seem the same to me. All three brands represent good quality and oftentimes unique hotels that would otherwise be independent, but I've chosen to link up with Marriott for that greater recognition among travelers. If you're somebody who wants to stay at these more independent boutique hotels, but you still want your elite benefits like breakfast and drink vouchers and points, then you might go for an autograph collection or a tribute portfolio on your next trip. Design Hotels, by the way, also doesn't fully participate in the Marriott Bonvoy program. You can still earn and redeem points, but you can't get elite benefits like breakfast or suite upgrades. I mean, Ritz Carlton's and Editions have the excuse that they're trying to be exclusive, I don't know what's going on with design hotels. I really don't. To give you an idea of what autograph collection hotels are all about, I once stayed at the Hotel Telegraph in Tallinn, Estonia. It was housed in an old communications building in the heart of the Tallinn Old Town. Super unique place, would highly recommend it for any trips to Estonia. And again, it was that boutique vibe that autograph collection is all about. All right, so we've covered all the full service hotels by Marriott. Now it's time to move on to the limited service hotels where it's probably gonna be a bit cheaper, there's not much going on, there probably isn't a restaurant on site, and it's pretty much all about having a place to sleep at night. Running through them one by one, starting with Courtyard Hotels. Everybody's kind of familiar with Courtyard, there's really not too much to say about them. There's a nice room, a nice bathroom, sometimes, if you're lucky, a larger room or a suite. There's usually a grab and go section and a cafe in the lobby. And if you're lucky and you go to one of the better courtyard hotels in Asia, there's sometimes even an executive lounge. In fact, my favorite courtyard stay was probably at the courtyard Phnom Penh in Cambodia, where they had really nicely appointed rooms, as well as an executive lounge and a rooftop pool overlooking the city. But otherwise, my remaining courtyard stays, mostly at airport hotels here and there, have been pretty forgettable for the most part. Four points by Sheraton. Think about it as being as cookie cutter as a Sheraton hotel, but cheaper and a little bit scaled down. There's not too much to say about a Four Points by Sheraton, although I did really enjoy the one in Auckland, New Zealand, and it's kind of weird that that's the only Marriott hotel in all of New Zealand. Then we have Element Hotels, which I've never stayed at before, but in my mind, I think of it as basically a clone of Four Points by Sheraton. If anybody stayed at Element Hotels before and knows something distinctive about it, do let me know in the comments below. Next up, Aloft Hotels. And for Aloft, you can kind of think of them as a baby version of W Hotels. They've got the same neon lights, they've got the same weird lettering to describe certain parts of the hotel, but overall it's pretty limited service. And there's usually not any suites at the hotel, it'll be just mostly rooms with a simple bathroom. I've only ever stayed at one Aloft hotel, it was in Montevideo in Uruguay, and I wasn't overly impressed. It was just kind of a simple, if a little bit colorful, place to rest our heads. Now another limited service brand that's kind of similar to Aloft is known as Moxie Hotels. And as I understand it, it's kind of like the hotel's take 
on a hostile experience. There's a lot of emphasis on the social spaces in the lobby and not a lot of emphasis at all in the room. The rooms are actually kind of poor quality based on all the reviews out there. Personally, for me, I've never stayed at a Moxie hotel before and I'm not too excited to stay at one for the first time. If I wanted to stay at a hostel, I would just go stay at a hostel. Now here's an interesting one. Residents in hotels are known for being a great fit for families who travel together because usually there's a suite as the base level room and there's a separate bedroom and a living room that can convert into a pull-out bed as well as a kitchenette where you can prepare some meals on your own for the kids to enjoy. If I'm not mistaken, I think I've stayed at one residence in in the past. It was the one in Ottawa, but it didn't really stand out for any reason. However, I do think that I will be staying at residence inns in the future when I have a family of my own and I need extra space for all the kids to run around. All right, we're almost getting to the end here with two limited service brands that are known for being particular to their geographic location. That's Protea Hotels, which is commonplace throughout Africa, and AC Hotels, which has a huge presence in Spain and a few hotels dotted around the world. These brands kind of originated in their respective locales and were eventually brought into the Marriott portfolio. And usually you'll only see a Protea hotel if you go to somewhere in Africa. They have quite a few nice hotels around safari locations as well as some of the popular national parks in South Africa. And if you ever wanted to do a road trip through Spain, you'll find AC hotels dotted through basically every little Spanish city. I personally would love to do an extended trip through Spain and Portugal one day, and I'm sure I'll be staying at lots of AC hotels at the time, just as I will be staying at lots of Protea hotels when I finally go on my first trip to South Africa one day. And finally, to wrap up the list, we have Spring Hill Suites, Fairfield Inn and & Suites, and Town Place Suites. And you know what? I really don't have anything to say about these brands besides the fact that they're great for mattress running because they're usually a category one or two if you find them in a cheap location. So you can often rack up lots of elite qualifying nights to help you earn or retain your Marriott Bonvoy status by booking an extended stay at one of these hotels. And hey, oftentimes if you call the front desk, they might be okay with you just doing mobile check-in without actually having to show up yourself. Of course, these hotels are often situated near the airport and they make for a cheap overnight stay before your flight. It's pretty simple, you check in, check out, and go catch your flight. Oof. And with that, we've covered pretty much everything you need to know about Marriott's 30 or so hotel brands under the overall portfolio. I really do think they have almost too many brands these days, and so I hope this video has been helpful in showing you what to expect from each different brand as you go about maximizing your Marriott Bonvoy points for hotel experiences after the pandemic is over. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. And let me know in the comments below how many of the different Marriott Bonvoy brands have you stayed at. By my count, I've stayed at 18 out of the 30 or so and which brand are you most eager to try next? Let me know and I'll see you in the next video. Woof, 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 woof.